Hi there, this is Unmesh from Piximperfect and today I'm gonna to share with you how to create a realistic glass effect or a window effect in Photoshop using not one, not two, but three textures. Isn't that interesting? Also, we're gonna learn some super cool masking techniques and blending techniques as well. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download this photo or any other textures, check the link in the description and also keep in mind before we begin a very important disclamatory notice. I don't know if that's a word I made that up, if it isn't. Well, here is the thing. I recommend you, I beg you, I request you not to memorize the steps. Just understand the concepts as you go. Because Photoshop is not about memorizing the steps. Let's say we are creating this class effect. So what do you think we should do first when you look at the image? Well, we need to add a texture of glass over it. So we added the texture. What do you think should we do next? What is amiss here? Maybe there's very less separation between the glass and the subject. So maybe a little bit of depth of field effect or a focus blur will kind of help here a little bit. Let's add that. Then what is missing? Maybe the colors are not matching and then we start matching the colors. So that's how we go. We don't go step one, step two, step three. That doesn't make any sense. We have to make sense and go with the flow. So always keep that in mind. And with that notice, let's get to it. Back in the magical world of Photoshop. And the first thing I feel we need to do here is to bring in the glass. So I'm going to go to my finder or explorer, whatever you want to call it. And here I have a photo. Have a look at this window scene. I really feel that we can use it. So let's just drag it and drop it into Photoshop over the canvas. Don't make another document of it. Just drop it right over there. Now let's make it a little bigger. Okay, just a little bigger. Now what do reflections do? When we talk about reflections on a glass, what do they do? They reflect light, right? And what is light? It's a bright thing, right? And what is the blend mode which makes things brighter? Screen. So change the blend mode from normal screen now it's beginning to look interesting now we need to adjust the position because we don't want all the light over her face we want it to be a little aside so that her eyes get a chance to peek through the hearts of the audience anyway so let's increase the size so i'm gonna go and make it a little more larger so about this and make it bring it a little bit to the side i'm so sorry if you can hear the crow in the background it's disturbing now there's so much light. We wanted to take it away from the dark areas of the current layer. So double click on the right hand side of the layer. This opens up the layer styles dialog box. Now we want to take this effect away from the dark areas, not of the layer which is under it, but from the current layer, from its own layer. And for this, in the blend if section, we're going to take the slider of this layer, this current layer from left to right. See, it takes away the dark areas from that. So hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on this slider to break it apart. This helps us make the transition smoother. And I'm going to make it all the way smooth. Take both the halves to the extremes and have a look at it. It begins to look more realistic, but we want a little more light in here, right? So there's two things we can do. We can either increase the light by simply duplicating this layer and making it available in certain areas so that the eyes don't get cover up. Or the second option and the final one that we're going to choose is darken the surrounding areas that will make the light stand out even more. We don't want to make it absolutely bright, right? We want it to have some depth. So press Ctrl or Command J, make a copy. Now, what is the blend mode which darkens stuff? Multiply, right? So change the blend mode from screen to multiply right there. Now it kind of looks awkward because the blend if that doesn't match with it. So double click on the right hand side of the layer and we'll, we'll do just the opposite. We want the bright areas to go away this time. Hold the Alt key, the Option key, click on the slider on the right, break it apart and take it to the extreme. See the depth we are adding? Just look at the water. It's looking so darn realistic. But we also don't want it in all of the areas, right? So click on the mask button right there. Okay. Now take the gradient tool. White to black is fine. And let's draw a gradient. Now it does the opposite because the reverse is checked on. So <laughs> let's check it off. And we're going to do something like this. Now that looks wonderful. How do you feel about that? It's interesting, isn't it? Also, let's add it a little bit in the corner because this area just kind of looks a little unrealistic. So we're going to take a big brush. Okay. Make sure it's a soft round brush. By the way, if you cannot see the brush strokes right there, just make sure you click on in here, check on brush strokes to see the brush strokes with white as the foreground color. So I'm just going to dab here and see what happens. Nothing because the flow is at 10. Let's increase the flow and try that again. And it's doing something crazy. 
you know why it's doing crazy because the blend mode here is color dodge <laughs> let's change it back to normal and let's try that again now it's getting a little better but still i don't kind of like it so i'm going to decrease the flow anyway to about 20 percent and just go around it something like this one more time a couple more times now it kind of looks all right there you have it look at it here's the before here's the after we definitely have come a long way. Now, I would highly recommend that if you're not on a diet, go ahead and take a snack break and get back to it. If you are on a diet, well, enjoy life, come on. Anyway, so once you get back, you will realize that there is no difference between the glass and the subject. There is no separating factor. In this case, I feel that a shallower depth of field will make that difference come alive. So let's zoom in first of all and select the subject layer or the background layer. Let's make a copy by pressing Ctrl or Command J. We always want to have a backup and then convert this into a smart object by going to filter and then convert for smart filter so that we can change the blur later. Now let's name this blurred. Let's go to filter, blur gallery and then iris blur. It really allows us to add blur in such a way that it grows from a certain area of your choice. So in this case, let's say this is the oval right there or an ellipse, whatever you want to call it. As you increase the blur, you will notice that everything inside the oval is sharp and outside the oval is blurred. Very interesting. So I'm going to decrease it all the way to zero. First of all, let's zoom out and adjust the oval according to the face. I'm going to make it a little larger than the face, something like this. It really suits it up and bring it a little bit to the top. This looks interesting. Let's make it even bigger. Okay. Now let's adjust the points accordingly. We need to bring it closer to the eyes and so that the blur just gradually grows in in the dimension of the face. So hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on one of these points to bring them closer individually. If you don't hold the Alt key or the Option key, all of them will move together. So hold the Alt key or the Option key, bring them closer. So I'm going to bring it closer to the eyes and maybe something like this. Let's rotate it even more to match that with that of the face. And you can also bring it a little bit to the center as well. Bring this one down as well. And now let's add blur. So I'm going to go with about 130 ish adds a brilliant blur. Now to add more mood and drama to it, you can even bring this point even closer to make the lips a little blurred and make it look even more interesting right there. You can bring these even closer as well just to make the blur look a little more interesting. And there you have a very interesting blur right there. Now still, there are some areas which are still very much tack sharp and that doesn't look very realistic. Have a look at the eyes, these areas. These are very tack sharp. To add an overall blur on top of that, let's check field blur. And once you click on field blur, let's add a little bit of blur, not too much. 15 might look realistic, but we don't want to lose the face. So in this case, let's add four or five. So we're going to go with four and hit OK right there. This is a brilliant blur, really separates the subject from that of the glass. Now I would recommend again, go ahead and take a break. Come back and see what is missing. Now, I wouldn't suggest having a snack every time you go because you will end up gaining a lot of weight like I did in lockdown. Anyway, let's zoom in. I feel that there needs to be a little more light in the eyes. So what about a little bit of kicker light? So just above the blurred layer right there, let's create a curves adjustment layer, our Pix Imperfect signature style adjustment. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose curves. Now we're going to take it all the way up. So click on the middle to create a point and take it all the way up just like DJ Khalid. And now select the mask right there, press Ctrl or Command I and take the brush. I think it was a different song all the way up. It was, I think it was DJ Khalid. I'm not really sure, but just correct me in the comments. Anyway, so let's make the brush a little larger. I think it's too large. So let's make it a little smaller. Make sure it's a soft round brush. And all you got to do is again, dab in here opposite to the direction of light. So if the light is falling right here, as you can see, the light is right there. So just dab on the opposite direction. Similarly, do the same on the other eye. Just dab with white, make sure the flow and opacity both are at 100 when you do that. There you go, interesting one. Similarly, let's do with the other one. Okay, now you can take it away from the excessive area. So paint with black on the areas where it was not supposed to be. Great. Similarly, let's do it here as well. Paint with black in areas where it was not supposed to be. Great. Now also, if you want, you can decrease the flow to about 20 or 30% and then just paint in the highlight area as well, just for a little added boost right there. See that? Now, this doesn't look very realistic. We still need to add a little bit of blend if to take it away from the already dark areas. So double click on the right hand side of the limb. We definitely want to take it away from the dark areas of the underlying layer because this layer has nothing. We want to take it away from the dark areas of the subject. Right. And where is the subject layer under it? So we want to take it away 
from the underlying layer slider using the slider on the left because left side represents the dark areas. So take the slider on the left and take it to the right. Hold the Alt key, the Option key. Click on it to break it apart. Okay. Hit OK once you're satisfied. If it looks too much to you, you can always decrease the opacity. So for now, I'm going to keep it at about 60%. How do you feel about that? That looks realistic. And the advantage of adjustment layers and working non-destructively, you already know we can always increase the values later or also adjust the curves if you wish to. Alrighty, my friends, now it's time for us to match color and the light. So in this case, if you have a look at the reflection outside the glass, if I just show that to you, so if I turn this into a normal blend mode, you'll be able to see. And if I clear everything, you'll be able to see the original image. Have a look at it. It's so greenish. It has a lot of mood and drama to it. You want to add that same thing to the face because it's the same light falling on the face. So let's go back to how it was. I did it just for demonstration. To match the color, first of all, we need to make a copy of this window scene right there. Press Ctrl or Command J, or you can bring it again, but that doesn't really matter. First of all, let's place it at the very top. Let's just discover everything the way it was. So let's change the blend mode to normal, or just you can clear out everything, or there's just one click to do it all, to make it normal. And that is just right click on it, and then choose Clear Layer Style. It clears out everything. It makes the blend mode normal. It clears out the blend if everything. Now we need to blur it all. So let's go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. So much so that it only has color information. It still has a little bit of detail. So we will increase it all the way high. How does 723 look? Interesting as well. We'll go even higher. Let's go 1000 pixels blur. So that only the color information and a little bit of light and shadow information stays just a little gradient here. And we are going to just name it coloring. Okay. And we will move this just above our subject. So just above the blur and the curves that we added right there, just right here. And we will change the blend mode from normal to guess what? You want to color it? So choose the blend mode, color. Now this looks uh, kind of too much. So let's change the blend mode to, sorry, opacity to 40%. Also, can you guess what the light is falling on? It's very simple, guess it. All right, have a look at the light around you and have a look at yourself in the mirror or at a photo. Where does the light actually fall on? Definitely in the highlights, not in the shadows because shadows are areas where the light don't fall on. It is as simple as that. So this coloring, we will only see in the highlight areas, right? Not in the shadow areas. So why not take this coloring away from the shadow areas, right? So double click on the right hand side of the layer. Take it away from shadow areas by taking the slider of underlying layer from left to right. Again, we'll hold the Alt key, the Option key, break up the slider and take it away that way. Have a look, the shadows have now retained the color and it's looking even more realistic. Also, we want a little bit reds of the lips to come through as well. So we'll go to the red channel and do the same. So in the blend diff drop down, let's go to the red channel and take it away from the dark reds as well. There you go. A little bit more skin color kind of shows through it. It looks more realistic and beautiful. All right. Now what next? We definitely need to match the lighting. We match the color. It's time for the lighting. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then again, guess what? Curves. Now let's try to make it a little bit darker. Point in the middle. Let's drag it down just like this. It's beginning to look more and more dramatic, my friends. But still, uh, the highlights wouldn't be so bright, right? So let's bring down the highlights as well. So we're going to bring it down just like this. Create a soft effect right over there. And it's creating a brilliant effect there. Now I feel that this area is getting just too dark. So we're going to go back again to the mask of the window scene copy right there. Take the brush and take black again and flow with 10%. We're just going to zoom out and start painting that area to bring back more light over there. Now it looks kind of more feasible and realistic and we can go with it. Now it is time for us to introduce the second texture. If you look at the glass, it's just so smooth, too smooth to be real. It has to have some wear and tear to it, right? So for that, I was thinking of adding some frozen glass texture or thinking of adding some grunge texture in there. But really, if you search for frozen glass or things like that, you wouldn't find the kind of texture you're looking for. So I wouldn't recommend always, when you, whenever you're looking for stock photos, don't always search what exactly you are looking for. Just think about the element. So in this element, I was looking for wear and tear, right? So for that, I thought maybe we should look for grunge textures. Now, 
By searching grunge textures, I didn't find anything exciting. And then I thought, why not search about a worn out tabletop or an old tabletop? That would get the job done. So the point I'm trying to make here is not always search exactly what you're looking for. If you can get it, fine. If you don't get it, think about the elements that you're looking for. In this case, I was looking for grunge and I found it in the craziest of places. So if I go to my finder or explorer, you will find this tabletop right there. In no way somebody could ever imagine that we could use it on a glass window, right? But we can actually use it. Look at the grunge. We can modify it to be able to just make it usable. It's a beer table for God's sakes. So let's just drag it and drop it over the canvas right over there. And we're going to drop it at the very top and just rotate it to our liking. Let's make it bigger. I'm going to place it right there. Let's make it bigger. And we don't want any of the beard thing to be <laughs> visible. We don't want any of the colors. We just want the texture from here. So what do we do? First of all, let's rasterize the layer. Right click on it and then choose rasterize layer. And let's desaturate it by pressing Control Shift U to desaturate. Now keep in mind, whenever there's a scratch in a window, it is brighter, right? So what is the blend mode we're going to use? Not multiply, screen. So let's change the blend mode from normal to screen. Just like this. But it's kind of too much, I know. So let's decrease the opacity to about uh, 15 or 16 something like that would work so let's go with 16 and have a look at the realism right here my friend it just begins to look so much more fantastic with all of the scratches on the glass and no way you could tell that we took it from a bar table anyway we want a little bit more at the bottom so we're going to make a copy of this by pressing ctrl or command j and just a little highlight from the bottom we're going to increase the opacity here a little bit let's go a little higher to about 60 ish so that we can see what's happening and press Control or command t we can actually make it a little smaller here and bring it down even if these are visible doesn't matter because we only will add here at the bottom look at what looks good in the bottom this area would work hit enter or return definitely we're going to create a mask so click on the mask button right there and again with the gradient right there with white to black let's add a gradient here something like this really adds a lot of drama here. Just look at it. Interesting, isn't it? Totally in love with this. Now it is time for us to add our third texture. Why do you think we're going to add it? Well, let's suppose there is cold outside. Do you know what happens inside? Just water condenses. So we need to add something on those lines on the inside as well. So I have a texture right there. Wet glass overlay. Let's just drag it and drop it into Photoshop. So over the canvas, we are just going to drop it. Now, we want it just above the subject. So let's first of all adjust it accordingly. Now that you have it, make sure you add it just below the window scene. We need to take off the color overlay and make more adjustments. So right click on it to make things simpler. We're going to just rasterize this layer and then press Control Shift U to take away all the colors. Definitely change the blend mode to screen. Now, as you can see, this is too bright. So we need to just adjust it accordingly. So create a curves adjustment layer again. And whatever you do inside the curves will affect the entire image. We don't want that. We only want to touch the wet glass overlay right there. So how do we just limit it to wet glass overlay? Well, just click on this button. This will create a clipping mask. Let's try taking this slider to the right so that the dark areas become darker like this. To increase the contrast, we can give it a little extra curve like this right there. Now that looks more like it. Interesting. Okay. Now, of course, this is too much. So let's decrease the opacity to about 40%. Okay. This looks um, quite interesting. But then again, there are some things we need to do. We need to wipe it off from the face. We'll get to that later. But for now, this is what it is. Let's make a group of both of these. So select the wet glass overlay, hold the control or command, select the curves adjustment layer, press control or command G. And we can just name it wet glass inside. Okay. Now, how about we blur the subject as well according to this texture because whenever there is condensed water inside, it just blurs the scene a little bit according to where the water is. Why don't we blur those areas? Wouldn't that be interesting? So let's do that. Meanwhile, let's turn off this group. Let's open the group and we want just this overlay again for our purposes. So we're going to make a copy of that and uh, take it outside. First of all, let's take it outside. Okay. And then again, clip in the curves because it got detached anyway. 
So we're going to bring it all the way to the top. This is just for reference, my friends. Right click on it and then choose clear layer style. Everything will be cleared. Blend mode will be normal. Opacity will be 100. We already talked about it. Now we only want to make a selection of this foggy frosted areas like this and blur exactly those areas over the subject. So for that, let's turn it off for the moment and come down right here. And we're going to make one more copy of the background layer. Okay. And let's name this extra blur. Again, go to filter and then convert for smart filters. Hit OK. Now let's add a simple Gaussian blur over it by going to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Let's go with about 85. We don't want 1000. 85 or 90 would look good on this one. 85. Okay. It would be blurred like this if this were absolutely frosted. This looks all right. Hit OK. Now we only want it in certain areas. So again, to make a selection, let's turn this on first of all. And then let's go to select and then color range. Now those frosted areas are a little bit darker. So from the drop down of select, let's choose shadows. Okay. And slowly and gradually we will increase the fuzziness to make sure that all of those areas are selected. You can decrease the range and then start increasing the fuzziness. Fuzziness controls the transition between the areas that are selected and the areas that are not. And then you can work on the range a little bit. Hit OK once you have the selection in place. Now you can turn this off or delete it. It doesn't really matter. You can just keep it. It's up to you. Now come down and in the extra blur layer, just click on the mask button. Now have a look at it, how more realistic it has become. So let me show you. Without it, you won't be able to see. Can you look at it? Now, of course, this is too much. So we'll decrease the opacity. Just keep a little bit of these. Look at the glass texture right there. All right. So for this one, we're going to keep it at about 60% to just have that dust, some frosted glass uh, effect right there. It really adds a little tiny effect, but makes a lot of difference in the complete picture. By the way, to turn on every layer right there, you right click on one of these. Choose show and hide all layers. Turn this on and we don't really need the wet glass overlay copy. So let's delete it. Now, we still need to wipe this effect off from the face. There's just too much texture over there. So to wipe off the wetness, what do you think we should do? Wipe it off. And how do you think we can wipe it off? <laughs> Hit the mask. So here, wet glass inside, if we turn it off and turn it on, we know this is the layer. So select this group right there create a mask. Now you can use any of the brushes you like. So I'm going to go to my brush. You can use a hard round brush or you can use some um, other kinds of brushes here as well. So in the wet media brushes section, you can also paint with the real oils, which is a cool one too. So let's try the real oils right there and let's make it a little bigger and you can start painting with black right there. Just paint over. It'll be a little slow because it's a heavy brush right there. It, it has a lot of properties in here, but look at how we are wiping it. It's taking a little while, but look at how we are wiping it. Pretty interesting, isn't it? The one that I'm going to use here is uh, one that I recently downloaded from Envato Elements, some watercolor brushes. I'm going to link that up in the description. So I have it right over here, if I can show this to you. 106 watercolor brushes. These are pretty darn cool. I just want to see the tip. So we're going to click on the gear icon right there and just check off brush stroke so that we can see just the tip in here. Pretty cool, pretty amazing brushes. We can use them. I would highly recommend these premium brushes. And the advantage of Envato Elements is, is that you get millions of assets, not just these brushes, but thousands and thousands of other brushes, plugins, presets, and all of that. By the way, if you don't want to pay, that's fine too. You can also get some incredible brushes from brusheasy.com as well for free. Or if you want to manually do it with the brush of your choice, you are most welcome to. That would be actually the best. So anyway, let's select one of these brushes and just dab once. Let's get this job done right there. Let's go with this one. It has a lot to it, isn't it? So this is a very interesting shape with a lot going on. With black as the color, make sure everything is at its highest value. Make sure we have selected a regular brush, not a mixer brush. And then we pick one of these brushes. Make sure that the flow and opacity are at 100. You're going to make the brush as big as it will go. And then try to paint right there and see what happens. So paint with black, just dab once and have a look at it. Looks pretty darn interesting, isn't it? But we need to make it a little more opaque. So 
maybe we need to just paint in a couple times. So I'm going to do it with the mouse so that I don't accidentally move my pen. So this is all right. Uh, let's move it a little down. The position looks all right. Let's click once, click twice. What about third time? Fourth time? All right, this was fine. This was fine. Now take a look at it. Isn't that fantastic? Now we can make it even more exciting. First of all, it's very dark. So let's make it a little brighter. So just above the window scene copy right there, we're going to create a curves adjustment layer. So many curves, right? We just love curves. Now let's make it brighter. First of all, we see that this area has nothing. So we can definitely take advantage of that. We can bring it right there to make it all so bright. And also just add a little bit of curve to add a little more brightness to it. Let's add so much drama. Don't worry about clipping. Art is not about worrying about which area has details or which area doesn't have details. Let's end it off with a beautiful color grade. And the easiest way to do that is by using a color lookup table. So click on the adjustment layer icon, then choose color lookup. You can just try what you like. Three step strip, four strip, bleach bypass. But I really ended up liking crisp warm. And take a look. If this is not mysteriously beautiful, I don't know what is. It really makes it beautiful. Now, we don't have to go that extreme. Let's go with 50% opacity. If you want a little more, you can because I am in love with Absolute 100 as well. But I feel that the bright areas are just getting too bright. So we can always come back to the curves down here and just correct it. Let's start it from the beginning. This seems to be about right. Take a look. So that's how to add an absolutely realistic glass effect or a window effect in Photoshop. One thing to keep in mind, please, I beg you, please do not memorize the steps. Because if you try to do that, there are so many things we did. If you try to remember the steps, it'll be crazy. It'll take so much time and it'll just confuse you. Don't do that. Please just understand the concepts. And once you understand the concepts, just go with the flow. You feel like adding a glass, let's bring in a glass. Then you look at it and then see what's amiss here. Then you add that particular effect. Then with the flow, you feel that there needs to be certain color grading done. You do that color grading. Just go with your flow. Doesn't have to be in this order. Doesn't have to have the same steps. I did this so that you can understand the concepts of how certain things are being done and achieved. That's it. And from there, you are the artist. Just take it forward, make it go. Just make sure as you're creating it, the more non-destructive you make it, the better, because after a break, when you come back, you'll see certain things and you'll want to make changes. So try to make it non-destructive, try to take breaks. And even now, if I try to take a break and come back to it, I will have some <laughs> changes to make to this one as well. So go with the flow, understand the concepts and keep creating. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pixel Perfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you, you already know it, keep creating.